Right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. All right, so today we're checking out a video from BFBS Creative. Now, you guys already know they do some pretty fantastic content. Very cinematic, but also a good amount of action in it as well. Now, this one was recommended to me a lot. It's probably like 10 times in the first day that I started getting it. So it's titled Sub-Zero Rescue in Iceland with Royal Marines and U.S. Marine Corps. So the U.S. Marines are going to be in this. So I'm definitely going to be judging their tactics and their gear, sort of their discipline. Because if they look eight up, I'm definitely going to be the first one to let you guys know. But yeah, with the Royal Marines and U.S. Marines, should be a pretty good time. Now, hopefully this isn't a force on force kind of thing because yeah, last time that happened, there was like a big headline about how the Royal Marines crushed the US Marines or something. Probably fake news, but you know how it is. So hopefully to mitigate some of that, that's not happening here, but should be good. Let's go ahead and check it out. Starting with the CH-53s, huh? Oh man, the editing is so sweet too. Oh yeah, it is Iceland as well. That terrain is going to be gnarly. Rarely fought by individual nations. Cooperation with allies is key. Oh yeah. From operating together in combat to rescuing down pilots, there is no substitute for having practiced shoulder to shoulder. Oh yeah, the Elkacks, man, those things are insanely loud and they just kick up a lot of water, but they're pretty cool. Now, I wonder what Marine Corps unit this is. It looks like a normal infantry units. I know one time we checked out a Finland video and it was like the light armored reconnaissance guys, which yeah, they're not the same as a normal infantry units. I'm just going to go ahead and say it, but yeah, hopefully these guys know how to do it. I'm, I, I like seeing the U.S. Marines with the new kit. It's good stuff. I'm glad they're getting that. About time, I guess. Man, those 53s on that terrain. After our recent Scary. trip to Norway, we decided to follow the Royal Marines onto their next cold weather deployment. <laughs> I wonder what part of Iceland this is going to be in. Working together isn't new. The UK have formed coalitions for the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to name but a few. But mm. during these conflicts, nations were allocated an area of operations within which they operate independently, but towards a common goal. Mm. What would happen? if they got even closer than that. Yeah, like shoulder to shoulder, to shoulder kind of Since stuff. Since 1664, Royal Marines have been a part of the naval fleet, okay. but now they have new aircraft carriers to operate from. They're pretty cool. We got the if Queen you Elizabeth. Test your capability, you need to do it somewhere where the conditions push you to your limits. Jeez. I'm joining Marines from 4-2 Commando as they team up with their US and Icelandic allies in a joint exercise. And we're better than here in Iceland. That's sick. Seagulls, I think. This dude is so lucky, I gotta say. That looks sick. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so I'm a Staff Sergeant Swab. I'm with uh, Echo Company 2-6. I'm the Weapons okay. Platoon Sergeant. 20 seconds. Working with the UK Marines, actually, it's been pretty uh, seamless. Um, some of us have actually had a lot of experience working with the UK in the past, whether Hell it was yeah. on combat deployments or other training missions. Uh, speak the same language, uh, have the same lingo. Um, I think US Marine Corps lingo is generally just like more vulgar, but with the UK, I think you, you need to understand their normal lingo before you go to like the military lingo because like, like hoofing, who, I don't know how to say it. Hoofing, whatever, if something is like good, I don't know if that's something civilians say, but yeah, just like, it, it's such a weird thing to, to say something that's good and say hoofing is not something we would say. We would say like, good to go. You can kind of extrapolate what that means too. Really, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty good fit all in all. Uh, we swap tactics, talk about how they do certain things, talk about how we do certain things, hmm. and really just getting out there and getting it done and seeing how it looks on the ground. I'm First Lieutenant Olajide. I'm Weapons Platoon Commander for Echo Company, uh, Victor 26. Jeez, when the tenants start looking young, that's how you know you're getting old. So an exercise like Northern Vi Viking 22 uh, is so that the US side and the UK side can, can build and start sharing those standard operating procedures uh, with mm -hmm. one another, figure out what works, what doesn't, uh, oh, yeah. and take, take the best of both sides essentially. 
Iceland's a pretty it, beautiful country. Um, the the weather is very. a little bit bipolar. It'll, it'll <laughs> consistently changes. You don't know what necessarily to plan for. At least from from my side, you'll go. That's true. I've only flown through like uh, Reykjavik a couple times, and well, it was maybe like four times. But every time I go, the weather looks completely different. So I can understand it just from that perspective. I'm expecting one thing, and the, and the the weather will change rapidly. Uh, there's there's a lot of volcanic, mm. you know, rocks and kind of harsh terrain, I would say, to yeah. operate in. It's like another planet. That is so freaking sweet. They brought the carrier out there? Wherever they are Man. around the world, the task marine face aboard ship very hugely. And then launch it <laughs> off into that. But with aircraft taking part in any combat, one role they are ready for is rescuing pilots and aircraft. Mm. Yeah, we call it trap. Tactical recovery uh, so of I'm air Captain personnel. Sam. Uh, and I'm M Company's training officer uh, from 14 Commander. Uh, so that dude looks exactly like the new Spider-Man. What's his name? Tom Hiddleston or something? Yeah, he looks exactly like him. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks that. So there's a lot on. of interest in the North at the moment. Therefore, we need to learn how to operate in this environment, uh, develop our own uh, SOPs and TTPs. Uh, so 42 Commando provides the Navy with a JPR capability, uh, which is Joint Personnel Recovery. Uh, recovery of personnel uh, and or uh, an asset uh, mm. in potentially a contested environment. So we're working on the uh, They've been conducting or ha have had trap uh, for a long time. There you go, um, trap. A lot of our doctrine is, is mirrored off of them. Uh, what we can do is pick, pick the best of both uh, and then mm. take the capability forward. It's a good way so to do talking it. Talking about trap, uh, which stands for tactical recovery of aircraft and personnel. Uh, in short, TRAP is basically for rescuing down pilots. Um, whether they're down, they're injured, uh, they're- Now, I did a few TRAP exercises when I was in the Marines, and it's always like really interesting. I think at the smallest level we did it was a company level. Cause you gotta think there's, it's a pretty tough and risky mission, especially given the location that, you know, the aircraft go down. It's probably not going to be in you know friendly territory it's probably going to be in contested or you know enemy territory so you need to be quick about it but you also need to be able to show up with enough force to be able to you know obviously secure those personnel and the aircraft and get out of there without getting into too much trouble but if you get too big of a force then it might be kind of a hindrance so that's also some give and take there but it is a fun thing to train on craft crashed or it was shot down uh, the whole purpose in trap is so people can come in and rescue the downed pilots and get rid of the aircraft if the situation calls for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the JPR operation has five <laughs> phases. Uh, phase one is the report. Uh, so phase two, the locate. And that's essentially uh, us understanding. I'm definitely going to put up a picture of Spider-Man next to him so you guys can see. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, like, holy cow. Exactly where they are. <laughs> Uh, and exactly who they are as well, so authenticate them as well. Hmm. Uh, so phase three is, is support, phase four, um, the recovery phase, that's where ourselves uh, and an enabling element. We'd have, we'd be in the recovery vehicles, so for us, Merlin Mark IV, uh, and then above <laughs> us will be a stack of uh, various aircraft uh, in order to Damn. get the recovery vehicles that's safely hot. to the location of the asset environment. That terrain, I mean, that's pretty realistic training right there. I don't know about the aircraft, probably be a little bit more jacked up, but, and the dude himself. So we've got both of the CH-53s have just landed. It's a mixture of Royal Marines and USMC. We've got, it looks like they're beginning to create a cordon for some sort of defense and security around the downed pilot that's just here. So that'll enable either side to come on and extract the casualty back onto the aircraft mm. that will likely collapse the security there and then extract back onto the ship oh yeah it's pretty exciting <laughs> it is it's not that exciting you're just pulling security for the most part doing the medical stuff and getting the guy off of the x is pretty cool Tactical scenario, aircraft went down. Uh, we got indication that the pilots had uh, good shoots. Uh, so we had a trap force stood up that was uh, 
They say conglomerate of U.S. Marines. <laughs> conglomerate. Uh, building that trap package, uh, insert in, find them, uh, reach the crash site, uh, triage the casualties, and then uh, prep them for extra. So this is 22nd Mew. These guys have probably gone through an extensive workup already just to actually get into the sort of Mew cycle. But I'm not exactly sure which unit because with the Mews, they sort of cycle out units. So if we can see one of their patches, we'll be able to see what unit this actually is. But yeah, it's definitely one of the normal sort of line battalions. So it's good to see. Sustained. Uh, so the treatment's been rendered the max that we can give them for the time being. So right now we're putting them on stretchers and spacesuits so they can stay warm and uh, not... Uh, going any kind of like hypothermic shock. Space suits. And uh, right now is, uh, we're preparing to move them as safely as possible with as much um, presence of security as possible so in the safest sense that we can. Hmm. We're... Just, uh, yes, yes, I'm saying. What's just happened? Pulling security. Uh, we sort of run through a planning cycle of how we're going to build up to do. We call it joint personnel recovery. They call it trap. Uh, and how basically we would... Uh, the actions on how we would insert uh, on an isolated person, what we'd conduct, and then how we'd extract them, obviously, depending on the threat. Hmm. Like I oh, what the heck? Are y'all getting issued? It looks like this is a Cry G4 bottoms, which is pretty, pretty nice and also very expensive. So if y'all are getting issued that now in the Royal Marines, good stuff. I know you guys are getting new weapons. Uh, I'm not sure how everybody is going to the the c8s i know 4-2 commando is going to the c8s but i know y'all were getting the new plate carriers and the new helmets but yeah those i gotta say those pants are pretty nice so i'm not sure if that's just him or if that's everybody yeah the marine kit the u.s marine kit is looking good now it's good to see I wonder how long this actually took. Just a second. Yeah, checking my time. So I do the demo. Okay. If this were a real situation, I'd end up wiring that thing up. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. On a real aircraft, I'd probably end up using C4, a couple of thermites, um, about 200 feet of deck cord. I'd have to push these guys out about 200 meters just so that they're clear of the blast. <laughs> and then the time fuse, which is a delayed detonation system, that would be set to about five minutes. Yeah. So from the point that I pull it and we all start moving, we have five minutes to get that to meters. Why, why do you need to destroy it? Um, so it's really just mission protocol, like depending on what they <laughs> ask us. So in this... Yeah, it definitely depends on what kind of aircraft it is and also what's inside of it. It's because obviously if it's like an F-35 or even like one of the, the special like SOAR helicopters, you don't want that just chilling there because, you know, there's certain components on it. If the enemy were to, you know, get it and kind of reverse engineer it or study it, they can use it to understand maybe some weaknesses or how to defeat that specific system or component. Of course, if there's also radios or encryption devices, you don't want those chilling there as well. So it's just easier to destroy it. Obviously, in an environment like this, it's just going to be easier to do that than to try and recover all that stuff. Because, again, it's probably going to be in pretty contested, you know, territory. Situation down aircraft we're gonna have to leave it we don't want anybody else to be able to cover that take key things out of it like uh, mapping systems radio systems any navigation uh, black box anything secure or classified can't let them have it so we got to destroy it on site and then that then you're gonna do what just and then exhale <laughs> balance <laughs> you can't get a good appreciation for how cold it is besides just their voices The nice thing about 53s is that they can fit a lot of people on there. And these guys are packing pretty light because obviously they're not expecting to be out for too long. So you can fit even more. Makes makes getting on well and off easier to too. Their ability to recover personnel. The UK and US forces are here to demonstrate their wider commitment to the high north. Hmm. The region is under threat by climate change and political instability. To ensure peace continues, cooperation between NATO allies is crucial. Such sick editing. 
The oh, concept of a Fort future commando? commando force has drawn lots of interest. But since their restructure, 4-2 Commando have, in some respect, gone back to hmm. their roots. Oh, yeah. They've stepped away from the infantry role they filled during the global war on terror and instead assumed more amphibious operations. That's good stuff, man. Out at sea, aboard the USS Arlington, they're planning a raid. Okay, we LPD. We caught up with them as they came ashore. USMC style. <laughs> nice. So actually, a fun fact with the LPD is, I'm not sure if this is one of them, but with this class of ship, a lot of these were, if not all of them, have steel from the World Trade Center actually built into the hull, which is pretty freaking badass. I'm sure I've said that in another video, but if you guys didn't see it, it's just a badass sure. fact. USMC style. Good old LCACs. Yeah, just deflating once it gets to the surface. Pretty cool. Okay, nice. That looks fun. That's like some dope scenery right there too. Oh yeah, look at that dude. Hell yeah. And some CQB stuff going on. So I'm looking for the blanks. So they got blanks. So I'm not sure if this is a force on force or... They just don't want to mess up the buildings. What's going on there? <laughs> okay, that's pretty dope. That was cool editing. How do they do that, man? That's sick. So they've just landed from the helos. And they're now attacking in this direction up here. Hmm. You can see the Marines stacked up just on the side and it's a mixed contingent of Royal Marines and <laughs> USMC. That's cool. Taking part in this attack together. Looks like it's a pretty big little... Hey. Trying to get a good feel. I'm not sure how big this compound is, but... Yeah, that, I gotta say, just the scenery, the terrain is pretty badass. So yeah, it looks like, I'm not sure what we're working with, maybe just like a, a platoon or a couple of platoons, but you got like the support by fire, these guys are covering, these guys moving up to the buildings, and they're going, and doing the fun stuff. I always love being the squad, actually going into the buildings and bunkers. Okay, good tactics there. Good communication too. That's probably the Royal Marines though, I gotta say. Unless the US Marines got a little bit better with their CQB. The aim is for us is to, to, to what we'd like to be. So we've done it in the cold weather environment. Before I don't know what that was. was. Sort of three arduous environments. Yeah. So jungle, desert and urban. Yeah. If we can get those ticks in the box and train in those environments alongside the Americans or, or sort of in isolation even, but then with the, mm. the sort of end game to try and train alongside these guys, you know, we'll be pretty formidable and potent force. Yeah, right. Hell right. yeah. Right. You can see that, I look pretty swept up. They're already, I suppose, after like a fairly short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Sick, man. From my own experience as a Royal Marine, and from what I've seen from 4-2 Commando over the past week, it looks to me like they're ready for whatever challenges they may have to face. Hmm. Now, all that's left to do is extract back to USS Arlington. <laughs> Hell yeah. And just chill on ship and be bored, chill out, eat. I don't know, that's, a, that's kind of the nice thing about being on ship is you're not really bothered too much. Except obviously you have to like clean and do all the maintenance portion. Hopefully the heat works there on that ship. It's pretty new though. And then getting everybody back to the ship probably takes forever. Getting all the LCACs, getting all the... If they had small boats, like the Royal Marine small boats, getting the kilos. Hmm. That's pretty cool though. So I know... Does Iceland have a military? I don't think Iceland has a military in and of Thanks itself. Thanks for watching. But... And don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on our other oh, yeah. military videos. Yep, of That's course, the... I'll put the original video down in the description so you guys can check it out. But yeah, let me Google, does Iceland actually have a military? Yeah, so they don't have like a, a standing army. 
Um, so a lot of NATO support, which is why it makes sense that they're going to be trying to have these NATO exercises and these joint forces training together at these locations. And that's really smart. It's not something that I saw too much when I was growing up in the Marine Corps. I know Norway was still a pretty big thing. Um, some of my unit went to Norway in 2016. So yeah, I know that was going on. But as far as like all these other countries like Finland and I mean, Finland isn't NATO, but we've seen them training together and Iceland. I'm not sure when that started or when that sort of picked up, but it's really cool to see that going on. And again, it's very, very smart given what's going on and how sort of volatile that region can be. So you definitely want to make sure you're locking down some of these, you know, Nordic countries and whatnot. But a very, very cool video as we expected, very cinematic, cool action. And again, cool seeing the Royal Marines and U.S. Marines working together, seeing all the cool, the LCACs, the, the CH-53s, seeing them do like the 4-2 commando stuff as well, seeing the aircraft carriers. Yeah, they definitely were not being stingy with this operation. They were bringing everything, and it's really good to see because, again, sort of train how you fight kind of mentality. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys took part in this, definitely let me know down below, whether it be from the Royal Marine side or the U.S. Marine side or otherwise, it looked like a really fun time. These guys are pretty lucky. You generally do some pretty cool stuff when you're on the Marine Expeditionary Units. But uh, yeah, this one looked like an exceptionally fun one. But let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Comment, of course. Let me know what you guys think. And definitely consider subscribing. We have a lot of cool videos I need to check out. And I do appreciate you guys sending the recommendations because... They're always really good stuff. But that's it for this video. I will see you all in the next one.